conversation, uh, like uh, giving feedback from the community, so from you all, about what you'd like to see in terms of governance for the project. So again, we don't have a fixed governance yet. Uh, we don't know where the project will land yet. We should know within a month, but it's a pretty good opportunity while we have the whole community here to discuss about that. So Chris, do you want to talk a little bit? This one's on. Oh, I turned it off. Oh, sorry. All right. Does that work? Cool. Um, thank you. Uh, I'm Chris Wright, and, and what I wanted to do is just solicit some feedback, some community feedback, in terms of what kinds of things you're looking for in a community project as this project is look, looking to place itself in a home home is to be, to be determined, and that could influence some of the governance decisions in terms of go to certain foundations. They already have some structure. But I think as a community, it's really important to hear uh, what, what you think is important. And I can tell you from my perspective, not being a day-to-day -day developer on the project, but you know, involved more from, from just Red Hat as an engineering force, as a lot of people involved in these, this project and surrounding projects, um, we have some things that we'd like to, to see. Uh, and so some, some examples that I'll throw out there just to stimulate the conversation would be um, really first and foremost developing a culture of, of collaboration. And some of the concerns that we have are where decisions are made, even technical decisions, and how much those are surfaced into the community versus um, sort of bequeathed to the community, pre-baked. Uh, and I think this is a great opportunity to, to set some kind of cultural norms around, you saw this morning some, some proposals that are kind of long-term refactoring of um, really a, a project that has been you know, arguably more monolithic. And I think one of our concerns is each of those architectural refactoring steps should really be done as a broader community in, input. Um, so that's just one concrete example. Not really concrete in the sense that there's a governance structure proposal around that, but the sort of a principle that I think we should uh, you know, I, I think it would be important to strive for. Uh, other examples would be just simple day-to-day -day maintainership and emitter rights, and whether we have uh, develop as a community uh, consistent kind of BDFL style uh, uh, maintenance or a shared maintainer pool. Uh, obviously, a lot of strong opinions there and, and changes workflows. I think that's another reasonable thing to, to discuss. Um, and I feel like I had one other idea, but now that I'm standing in front of people, I forgot it. So um, that's really all I want to say. It's really about stimulating discussion. And, and, I, and I would love it if we could get a volunteer to scribe things. And if we have specific uh, inputs from the community, capture those and, and document those so we don't lose them as, as uh, the, the Docker team continues to look for the right long-term home. So. Took the, the wind out of the room, the oxygen out of the room. <laughs> okay, so Doug just offered to be the scribe. Thank you. <laughs> any inputs? Any thoughts? Originally, I had spoken with Solomon about this, uh, and, and he thought it would be a good idea to have people who are interested break out and run a session on this. We didn't quite organize ourselves well enough to get it on the agenda. Uh, so, very well could be the wrong audience here, but. I want to at least follow through and, and give opportunity for the conversation. Yeah. You could say it again. Yeah. <laughs> I'm 
the discussion, it was, uh, I think it was pretty clear that there was a good representation in the room of people coming from different companies and different perspectives and different, uh, you know, different motivations. And so, you know, you may not be fully represented here, but in answer to your question about the right people in the room, I suspect they probably are. So, you know, it'd be a definite place to start. Cool. Thank you. Mike drop. And he's uh, we, 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 I brought up a similar topic at the end. I didn't know this was on the agenda to, to talk about here, but we I, I brought up similar towards the end of the distribution talk. And, um, perhaps this could, yeah, this definitely could use more, more collaboration. But it, I, I feel like even from folks that I've talked to in the getting ready and excited for what can, you know, opportunities that Container D can bring. That's been kind of the question that keeps coming up: is how how to participate, how to have not one not one particular uh, linchpin in the whole you know collaboration or contribution process. So it would be good to have some 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 kind of resolve on that it, wherever it ends up, wherever it lives. That besides the fact that the open governance is the bigger topic there. All open all the time. <laughs> well, well, I mean, and st st I could I could feel it coming up, but but I, <laughs> so I mean, in 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 if anything, like something that I feel like several of us have le have learned, including myself, in in the OCI process for the last year and a half, it has been really neat. Uh, also, wildly frustrating, just how open it's been, um, and. And so there, 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 there is a balance there to be had, but on the whole, it, it, it is a good process. Uh, on the whole, having it not just, you know, even if it comes down to, to maintainers at the end, being able to be the ones to LGTM and merge it, that, the, that every conversation doesn't feel like it's completely, hap, you know, come from some other direction and then merged or whatnot, that it's been a com an open conversation every single time. Uh, and you know, we don't have a IBM maintainer in the group yet, but it, you know, it's a con it, it's it doesn't matter because it's the conversation is so open, regardless of whether you work for a company or not, um, that it can it can still have the open conversation and progress can be made on it. Sure, the cadence could be better. Uh, there there should probably be times for like windows for review for uh, re requests for comments. All that kind of stuff, but on the whole, the open governance model has been really a good good aspect of that of the OCI process for last year. Want to add something, Stephen, to the? Uh, so uh, what I said in um, in the other what, what do we call those birds of feather sessions uh, to to Vincent um, was was we need to balance a government governance model with the uh, with kind of a fast paced prototyping mode that the project is in. Um, and so what, what I what I actually started out saying in that session was um, con the Container D contributors right now need to act as a team to get to feature completeness, and then we can start we, so that we have a base to act, to do actual proposals on. So whatever governance model that we do op adopt, we need to be fast paced now, and then be able to slow it down um, such that we have a a base that can be actually built upon and, and stabilized. So. Um, whatever we do, we need to find that balance. I yeah, I, I think I think there are um, candidate. There, there's nothing explicitly put there, but there's candidates for it, and like it, maybe somebody could do a proposal for like when we implement this set of features for Docker, and maybe CRI, and maybe one other target. Um, we could be considered ready to go forward, something like that. But um, 
the roadmap says for 1.0 that it, it's shipped it in production in one one runtime. Yeah. Doesn't it specify what, which is which seems a, a very minimal requirement. It should probably be more than one, but yeah, yeah. But I think some people assumed that meant Docker because I was someone was asking me the other day. I said no, it definitely doesn't mean Docker. Um, yeah, it could be any runtime. I think CRI would be a good um, target just because it's it's got a complete test suite that, that can be um, to a specific interface. But I don't. There, and there's, there's other there's other candidates out there too that we could we could look at. So. Um, I, I think it, there's a balance, and I, maybe I, I like to clarify it for myself what you're what you're saying, um, speed and how, how quickly you can move, and governance, and maybe a third kind of point on that triangle would be transparency and openness. So I think the speed doesn't need to preclude openness. Um, maybe the decision making process is, is governance and process just kind of by, by definition slows things down. And so what I want to understand is, is your vision um, keep sprinting forward and, and then have a more open process after that uh, or re really look for contributions starting yesterday and even in the kind of fast paced. Like in other words, when you talk about the container, do you, uh, Team needs to work as a team. Who do you consider as the team? The broader community, or or is it really localized right now? Uh, yeah, I think I left out my qualification on team from earlier, but I, I, I want it to be a cross company team. Okay. And I want us to be getting contributions now. And yeah. Uh, and but at the same time, it's very expensive to scale out all of these little holes when we don't necessarily know what everything quite looks like exactly. So yeah. Um, I think I think the biggest thing we're missing for the stage of this project right now is just a weekly call meeting that people can call in. We can talk out issues, um, and um, in addition to that, is um, just syn synchronous and slightly asynchronous communication over Slack or IRC or something like that. Yeah. Um, I think I think GitHub is is a good platform to discuss things on, but I, I feel like they sometimes the converse it's it's hard to. When you're, you're basically shouting in public, and yeah. and having that, you know, anybody can interject into the conversation when maybe it might be between a group of maintainers or a group of contributors. Like having that focus of like a like Slack or uh, IRC or a, a weekly meeting might focus that a little bit. But like, it's not about saying let like let's keep things closed and fast moving now. No, it's no. We want to be transparent, open. And fast moving without the um, encumbering us too much in updating the design docs every week. Right, like that's that's kind of so I'm, yeah. I'm, this is this is run fast and loose a little bit, but but not yeah yeah we, not we, closed. We need we, we need to have working code. Like that's the most yeah. important part right now. Um, for but we also need to have enough to where people can contribute to that working code so that it's contributing to the goal. So this is I just think this is the problem that we're dealing with right. I don't have a great suggestion for it. Oh, even that, you know, some weekly sync point that's part of the, part of the key contributors that are all actually involved. Yeah, because yeah. part of it I think is creating the right culture of, of trust amongst all the contributors, and that's that just requires. I mean, not to be too touchy feely, but it's human trust relationships that you're developing, and that just takes time and people working together. And yeah. Cool. Any other? <laughs> you see there, Vince. <laughs> yeah, so as far as governments goes, I think what we've had working for a long time in the Docker project and OCI is that 
maintainers make decisions and there's a clear path of what it takes to be a maintainer and kind of going forward. I think for this project that works well and having a diverse group of maintainers is good. And then like kind of more important than governments is like getting everyone's feedback on how to make contributions easier or what, what problems people have today coming into container D, finding things to help. Because like, who cares about governments if no one's contributing anyway? So finding a good low barrier to entry and like, what can the current maintainers do today to help make new people seeing the project and finding things to work on or getting synced up on the overall design and roadmap, things like that. Just for one thing, um, I think the, the weekly status reports that you put out are really, really helpful. Because as I think you were saying, it's hard to keep the design docs necessarily up to date because you're moving so fast. But those reports I found them very helpful because I can't participate as, as often as I'd like. Being able to read those and as from an outsider's point of view, being able to catch up on what's going on in one little spot, very helpful. So I thank you for that. All I said was I like writing those and they're easy to make. So, because we don't have to go back and like revise them. Whereas the design docs, I have to go and diff them every time I make a change and it's so, so expensive for, at some point we want to get them to be right. <laughs> so, but it's just expensive to do it like on a weekly basis. Any other feedback? Doug, you get it all written down? Got it all written down? Yeah. Okay, good. Uh, one point I've raised in the past. So it's generally harder for people to contribute to a project that has many different pieces. So like, for example, if it does one focus thing, it, it's easier to contribute to. So uh, are you guys open to the ideas of separating out or maintaining the snapshot and the image distribution packages, at least if not in a separate repo, in the same repo as libraries that could be imported elsewhere and are easy to understand and write tests for or reuse. So that way you can have like people focusing and helping out in specific areas. Uh, yeah, so like overall, as far as repo separation goes, we're we want to kind of keep it together because it's we're not building a file system. We're building a container runtime that has everything. But I think something that we could probably do, like what Kubernetes does, is all the SIG special interest groups for specific areas. And so it kind of reduces the surface area where maybe I'm a file system engineer. I only work on file systems. I only care about these issues, these concerns and structure meetings around around those certain areas that could maybe help out and structure meetings tag issues and prs accordingly so you can filter easier and then we we still have the need for like overall design of the entire system so you don't have four components designed by four different groups of people and you can tell like they should all interact and flow together so one of the downsides to splitting it all out is like you may have really nice well-defined components but you feel like you're using four applications instead of one and then i don't know what do you think about the sig groups yeah having SIGs is a good idea and i think at least like if you have like a package which doesn't depend, which doesn't have a lot of interdependencies in, with other packages in the container D, then it should be a good start. Just, I don't, that's how I write Go code. So, like, the snapshot package is, is well isolated. Um, a lot of the distribution stuff will be well isolated. So it should be usable in other projects. I wouldn't use it now because I'm going to change the interface and I'm going to break stuff, but uh, and other people will as well. Hopefully, uh, but 
but I think I think at some point it, it it's targetable as a Go package. So like it's just having those pieces in separate projects and then trying to put them back together is wildly more expensive from our goal. That the interface is gonna say, change, like, and that's great. I mean, it's early, but having a SIG or something where we can participate and be involved in those conversations would be helpful. Um, yeah, I mean, one thing about like you know segmenting the code so it's like storage, whatever, is um, in terms of, in terms of like people wanting to contribute or whatever, it's nice if the um, integration tests are also separated per concern. So it's like if I just care about storage, I can just run those and I see other examples of tests um, as opposed to like one gigantic suite. Anyone else? I think whatever meetings you set up, you should find a way to incorporate this uh, thing that we throw back and forth. <laughs> <laughs> you mean the rock? All right. I, All right. I think we're probably good. Thanks for uh, participating and uh, look forward to what we get as a community here. Thanks. Cool. Thanks. All right, so next topic, uh, Phil, Tim, and Michael on uh, integrating container D with other systems. Do that mean CRI, maybe? That means you guys. Uh, uh, talking about integrating with the solar systems. Uh, yeah. Is this like a Q&A or like, uh, like talking? Yeah. <laughs> We have no recollection of this. Sorry? <laughs> we have no recollection of this talk. Oh, no, no, so it's not a talk. Oh. It's, a, it's a bot that gathers okay. the feed. Uh, what do we need to integrate? Are there some requirements? So, Tim, did you talk about that? Yes. Uh, they can talk about the problems. Okay, so I, we have very loose guidelines for, for what we're going to talk about here, and it's supposed to be highly interactive. So um, I'll be disappointed if I don't get interrupted once every 30 seconds. Um, so just as a starting, <laughs> thank you, VBATS. Uh, start the timer. <laughs> he, he will, too. Um, I thought I'd start, maybe we'd talk a little bit about the way Kubernetes approaches um, Containerd, but the whole runtime integration um, problem space, right? So um, Kubernetes, we, we find ourselves in this weird position of um, getting a lot of attention like sort of well before we were really ready for it. Um, and a lot of people wanted to bring their own stuff to Kubernetes, they want to do their own thing uh, in the runtime space, in particular, apparently, like uh, there's a lot of people who have a lot of innovative ideas, and they, they want to play. And I hate saying no to people. Um, so um, it started with we were taking a lot of patches that we probably shouldn't have, in hindsight, taken. Um, and uh, it started to get out of I don't want to say out of control, but but a little bit messy. Um, and so you know that's when we started this whole idea of, of getting to CRI. We realized that. 
we were um, between everybody and the finish line. And that just wasn't fun. Like I didn't, we don't have the bandwidth to review these PRs. We don't have the context to review the PRs. So you end up rubber stamping stuff. And now I've got scary code that nobody ever really looked at, checked into your code base. And that wasn't a good situation. So that's really what led to us um, wanting to do CRI and to sort of get out of the way and, and not be coupled to any one platform, so we weren't really, you know, like locked into the future of Docker, but we were free to innovate, uh, free to try things underneath, and if we decided they were a bad idea, we could throw them away, which is just not true when you have deep roots with stuff. Um, and so, uh, you know, I'm a big fan of layers, uh, and so when we were looking at, you know, integrating with ContainerD, when, when the first topic came up, um, for me, like it, it seemed like a perfect fit. I think I said this earlier, but like the, the layering, fits exactly what, what we needed. Um, the early conversations were really about where the boundaries of ContainerD need to be, what's in, what's out. Um, networking was a great topic, because like, it seems obvious that networking should be in, but if ContainerD is really an integration point, I think everybody who's building up from ContainerD has an opinion on networking, so there's just no point in putting networking in, right? Maybe in the future we'll figure out that there is some modicum of, of stuff we can do to make things easier, but we don't know what that is yet, so let's just not do it. We should do as little as we can get away with, it's really. That is the guiding principle of Kubernetes. <laughs> as little as I can get away with. Um, so ContainerD versus Run C. Um, Run C only solves half of the problem that we need, right? And we could have written all the other parts ourselves, but we have other people who are more expert in this stuff than we are. It didn't make a lot of sense for Kubernetes to figure out all of the uh, distribution and packaging stuff. Um, it, we're not experts there. Docker already has the overwhelming mind share of the space. It only made sense to rely on stuff that was already built. Um, I think if you look at uh, the various other CRI implementations, you've got like CRIO, which is the OCI implementation, and they took a different tack. They actually are rebuilding some of these tools to try to uh, fill in the gap between run C and what Kubernetes needs um, on, on their own, more or less. Um, Rocket is another implementation where CoreOS had a, a different vision of how things should work, and um, they took it in, in a different sort of implementation direction. But in the end, when you stand back at the sort of the, the boundary of CRI, and I look at it, they're sort of all kind of indistinguishable. Like they have the same basic feature set. None of them, like we shouldn't be differentiating at this level anyway. This is not an exciting place to be differentiating at within container space. Now there's clear and there's you know VM-based runtimes, and, and that's interesting, but C groups and namespaces are not that complicated. They're not that interesting. Um, I think it's much better to be stable, reliable, well-used, have a good community, you know, these are the things that matter at the bottom of the stack. So I think Patrick had a good idea, so maybe a good segue. So Tim is basically saying, for his use case, ContainerD looks like kind of the perfect fit. You've got VMware, I don't know, CF Garden. Are there things you've seen today or that you've already looked at in the repo and you're thinking, you know, mostly fits, but here are areas where I have concerns or... So yeah, we already have a, a design document. Uh, it's a pull request right now on GitHub that lays out exactly how we want to integrate with this. Like we've been looking at this for weeks and weeks. You know, we're already on this. And in fact, Vlad here is full time on uh, on Container D as far as we're concerned at this point. So you know, we're committed to the source and we're very committed to it. So. Any other people representing consuming Container D? Oh yeah, yeah, I mean, of course. Yes, let me change my shirt to the tie. Uh, well, no, I was, we, we've got other IBMers here. I don't know if there's anything with Garden that's worth saying. So, you know, Garden already has a Run C integration. That's Is anybody here from CF? Yeah, I mean, I think they've they've 
built a pretty, I was looking at it just recently. I mean, it's a pretty good framework around Run C that meets our needs. So I guess we'll, we'll see. I mean, I think uh, public cloud wise, got the Amazon guys, I looked right past them. Um, but we also, you know, run a container service where I think we'll look at container D fairly strongly just as far as an embeddable runtime. Any other thoughts? Given the timelines for container D, what does it say to people who want to put like Kubernetes in production? So Kubernetes is gonna, let's say, transition to container D. I'm looking at container D and the slide says, okay, Q2 of 2017. Um, and today, let's say people are trying out with whatever version of Kubernetes, whatever version of Docker, right? Does it sort of uh, make them sad to look at the state and say, okay, oh shit, I mean, one more year before, uh, or? I don't think it should make anybody sad um, because, you know, net, net container D isn't a sort of functional improvement, right? It's an architectural improvement uh, it gets us to forward movement in sort of the Docker timeline um, in, from, you know, we're sort of in a stalled place right now. Um, but I don't think from an end user's point of view, this is like a, a critical, like, oh my God, I can, now I can use Kubernetes sort of thing. Um, it shouldn't be. If it is, my God, please talk to me. Um, I think, you know, Docker, on, or Kubernetes on Docker works today. Right, Google qualifies it against 111. Other people are out there running it against 112 and 113. Um, you know, it, it works, right? Um, so there's no there's no urgency to it. That said, the sooner we get this like sort of done, I don't want to say done. Done's the wrong word. As soon as we get a beachhead, right, a, a a place where we're all happy to say this works, right, um, the better off I think we'll be because it will unlock um, some amount of velocity and development, it'll unlock forward movement. So like, I know there's a ton of bug fixes in 112 and 113 that we haven't picked up because we're stuck on 111. Um, so it'll unlock those sorts of things, right? Um, and uh, so like my primary concern with the, I don't say concern, but my, my primary thought after today is uh, there's a lot of work going on here. This is like a real software project. And um, I, would look for opportunities for us to, to take good enough for now and move forward to good later. Um, just, I mean, it's a general truism, I guess, in software, but uh, it's one that's easy to forget <coughs> as, as engineers. Well, when do you project we'll get like a version of Kubernetes that works with ContainerD? Let me look in my crystal ball. <laughs> uh, Month, six weeks. I mean, uh, I'll quote an anonymous source who said, uh, I don't know who came up with this Q2 time. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, so, you know, I mean, realistically, Q2 is, you know, three and a half months away, right? Uh, well, four months, I guess. End of Q2. Right? Uh, and, um, Fiscal or? Uh, it, I, I don't even know what today is. Um, it's, it's on that order, right? Which is not a really long time in the realm of major software projects. Um, so, like, to get to GA by end of Q2 seems like a real stretch to me. Even in my most optimistic mode, uh, it seems like a stretch. Um, I could plausibly see a beta in Q2. Uh, I'm not going to put Michael on the spot, but uh, I could I could imagine that happening if we are conscientious about it and we like agree like having a having a goalpost, a timeline um, is really important for projects. Otherwise, they won't, right? And so I think as a community, it's worthwhile to set a, a deadline for like this is our goal: beta end of Q2, right? And if we do that, then we'll make different decisions than, I don't know, it'll be done when it's done, right? Um, and in, in general, I mean, there's two kinds of code, right? There's perfect code and there's code that ships. So um, that's this is my feeling. So if we get to beta in Q2, uh, maybe end of Q2, we would have a Kubernetes proof of concept integration. If we could get to GA by end of the calendar year, I mean, that'd be pretty good. And also, it's kind of like, for an end user, it's the same thing with Docker. Like, you use it today, container D ships its 1.0, you upgrade. As a user, you shouldn't see a difference whether you're using Docker or Kubernetes. Like, hopefully, if we do it right, you see some good performance gains and, and resource usage. 
But other than that, someone deploying containers should never know what's running at this level of the system as an end user. That said, like I'll pick on the um, the distribution stuff. Um, like there are things, there are features that I think this will unlock in the future. Like uh, I mentioned, the ability to do sort of retargeted remotes, right? The stuff that people do with their um, uh, uh, app repos that are, you know, you have your corp app repo, you can have your corp Docker Hub, right? And I think these are features that a lot of people want that are sort of stuck in the gaps between systems, um, and that this will start to unlock. But I don't think these are like nobody's pounding on the table demanding that from me. I just comes up a lot. Right now with Docker, we're in a situation where something like uh, remotes would be very, very hard to implement. Um, whereas with container D, we, we, we have somewhat of a blank slate distribution wise. We're going to leverage what code we have, but um, and there, there's areas that are new or just need to be rethought. And that, those, those, those are going to take more time. And we just need to make sure that what we do ship doesn't put us in a position where, like as an industry, we've, we've limited ourselves where, um, where we can't go forward with with whatever imaginative ideas we can come up for distributing and accessing images. I mean, this is the big challenge we face in our industry, right? It's to have the, the prescience to uh, see the road ahead of us but not walk the whole thing. It's tired. First CRI scaffolding. Uh, I predict it'll be a fellow by the name of Lantau, uh, who's sitting about three people to your left. <laughs> um, no, I mean it's it's taken Google a little bit of time to be able to shake loose some engineering to work on this. Um, I'm a little bit unhappy with that, but you know it is what it is. Uh, and uh, if anybody's here is not short staffed, I want to talk to you. Um, uh, so but now we have some actual dedicated bandwidth for this, and I think that that will be great, right? Step one is figure out everything that is missing from ContainerD's spec for what we need in CRI, right? And I don't expect that to be a zero list. Who else is, I mean, I know other people are building, looking at building ContainerD into other higher order systems. Like, somebody else, tell me about what you're thinking about. CS or answer like what what's on your mind? Okay, yeah. So I'm I'm from Rancher. Um, Rancher is kind of a odd company in the container world. Um, we kind of do anything and everything containers as long as people will pay us. Um, so the result is basically we support like Swarm, Kubernetes, Mesos, and all these different things. And um, over the last year, it's kind of been like um, everyone's started developing their own daemons, it's like Mesos has one, there's CR, like everyone started coming up with their own container runtime. And from a company like our, like us, that's not particularly great because we start losing this kind of ubiquitous base. And so it's much harder for us to build common tools because regardless of what orchestration system you're running, you run into a lot of the same things. You seem, you, you have like a lot of cross-cutting concerns. Um, whatever system you choose to how you want to, you know, write your YAMLs. Um, so the uh, the thing that is particularly interesting about Container D is that we have that chance again of having a good common platform below all of these systems. Like, you know, we started with Run C and Run C was great, but that's just really far too low level, you know, for anyone like for a lot of things. So, like, it, it works fine for like let's say like Cloud Foundry, but not for like a company enough where we want to like monitor and look at the containers and, and stuff like that. And so um, Container D is really quite um, compelling because if I can have a, a host 
where I'm running Kubernetes, and in a lot of the places where we run Kubernetes, we actually, people are running Docker containers on the same node for slightly different reasons. Um, but if I can provide tools and whatnot that actually show visibility to both of them and be able to interact with them or whatever, um, that provides quite a bit of benefit. So honestly, I'm very excited about Container D. It seems like the right level of abstraction um, that hopefully we can you know, get more systems to adopt and build on top of. So I think it's really important for this project to be as unopinionated as possible. So, so you said a word that triggered a memory for me. Um, I've spoken to a number of customers um, and, and potential integrators and, and consumers of systems like Kubernetes uh, who come back and said, you know, call me when you're ubiquitous. Call me when everybody has it. Um, and I think the, the fragmentation that we're seeing right now in the, the bottom of the stack is not a stable platform for anybody to become ubiquitous, which holds everybody back, right? Like, if we're gonna compete, and, and we are, like in many senses, many people in this room are competitors at the, the higher end of the stack, um, we all need a, a platform that we can stand on at the same time that, that works, because this is not a place worth differentiating. Yeah. It's to, customers don't care if the runtime is different. All they care is that they fixed this bug already in that other system, and now they've got it in this system. So to the governance topic, I think uh, the, the sort of collective ownership of this is really important. Right? Big part of why we see the fragmentation at the bottom is everybody wanted to be able to have design ownership, right? Um, and that totally makes sense as we're engineers, we want to have our opinions pulled forth, but I think at this point, like, the ideas are pretty well proven out. We understand the, the space now. Let's, uh, let's build something we all agree on and, like, agree that you own it and you own it and you own it and you own it and you own it. And can we move forward? I think like the hard part is like finding the smallest space that enables everyone to build what they need to build. So like finding a common core in Containerd, provide the right primitives so that Docker can build its platform, Kubernetes can build what they're building, and everyone else can can get to their goals as well. So like. There shouldn't be any anything platform specific in Containerd. Should look at it, and it should be like a no-brainer choice to use. Totally want to agree with both of the things you just said, and and I've spoken with quite a few people who are interested in what I would call um, reusable components. So it's the smallest building blocks that are reusable across different orchestration platforms. Nobody, like people are over pride and ownership and really just want to get on with doing real, real useful work. Uh, and I know from a Red Hat perspective, we're, we've been putting effort into Cryo. Um, again, it's not pride of, of authorship of that code as much as practical reality of what we're looking for is well-maintained, co community-maintained common building blocks. Uh, and if Containerd can be that and continue to, to kind of decompose the, the, the Docker into reusable pieces that we can integrate directly into Kubernetes. Awesome, like, perfect. That's that's all, I mean, honestly, that's all that we're trying to do, so. And I hear that repeatedly from other folks that I'm talking to, so it'd be great if we can get to that point. And I think, like, a lot of us in the container space now have been working together for many years, like Vincent, Manol, and all of us have been around, oh, since, yeah. <laughs> so, so like, as far as like ownership goes and stuff, I think we all can share a common theme there and all own this project and move it forward where it's in the best interest of everyone. All we care about is design and performance. And I also want to point out, like, I think this is the beginning of opportunities, other opportunities for collaboration and, and ownership stuff, right? Like there's already conversations going on around like storage, right? For example, another area that I'm involved that, you know, Docker has a driver and Mesos has a driver, Kubernetes has a driver, Cloud Foundry has a driver. And like, you know what? We've started talking to each other and like maybe we can actually find the lowest common thing that satisfies us all and means that we can stop competing for how many storage vendors support your platform, right? Which is a really stupid thing to think about.
they don't want to do the work to keep reintegrating with all those different platforms. So yeah, I mean, the, the truth is there's a lot of vendors out there who say, call me when the dust settles, right? I only want to write one driver. And then you get the fifth driver who's not any one orchestrator who tries to be the intermediary between all the orchestrators. And I'm not picking on anybody in particular right now. Um, but, uh, you know, and like, as an end user experience, it's a little awkward. Like, there's a lot of pieces, again, like through that picture of the pieces, 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 pieces. Do better than that. Other questions? Come on. You know, I'm still very quiet. <laughs> Blue. Is there anything like we could do better on the project to get people up to speed and can contribute on it? I've spent just one day um, on this, but I still don't think I grasped the whole picture. I, I would like to go back to the slide that I think Tim used or you used, I don't remember, which it showed those six blocks. This depends on this, this, one, this, and then this is the picture we have today, and here, you know, each layer provides X, Y, Z. Here's a simpler picture we are getting to, where we will have this and this, and these, uh, these, are the going, uh, these are the functionalities these components are going to have. Something very sort of concise and precise. That would be really awesome to see. Yeah, like we do have design documents in the repo, but keeping those up to date is kind of is a burden as things move. So maybe if we start splitting things out based on areas of interest, like the SIG groups, like we can defer design docs and like overall architecture to those individual groups, so storage and execution. So maybe I, if we can find a good split between those things, then it'll really help give a better picture of the entire system and have it more up to date for people coming in and seeing where we're at and where we're going. I think it would be reasonable to produce uh, a relatively simple diagram that sort of explains the way the way you just described it actually is is a pretty compelling like two slide slide deck right this is what we have today this is where we want to get to and these are sort of how we segment the the layers right I've said it before but I'm I'm a big fan of layers um, but they need to be sort of principally designed otherwise they just become chaos. I mean, I, I think in this regard, Kubernetes and Swarm are very similar. Like, the things that Swarm aims to provide on top of Docker are very similar to the things that Kubernetes aims to provide on top of Docker. Um, I'd be surprised if those two slides are different by more than one point. Um, yeah, I think um, the, the weekly status reports that people touched on are great. I think where, where we could do better than that probably is like rather than just saying what happened in the past is to also like what we're going to be doing next like week. Next I, think week. That, I think that would be particularly for someone like Vlad who's going to, going to be trying to you know pick up work and stuff. I think that's going to be to have that discussion happening every week would be really good. Thanks. Thanks. I think that's all we're going to squeeze out of you. <laughs> Anybody else? I think they're satisfying. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks.
Um, so yeah, we're getting very closer to beers. Uh, I, I'll just go quickly about, so we're supposed to do a recap on the buff sessions. Uh, I took the notes in the runtime session over there. Uh, I think someone else took the notes on the um, uh, image management one. Uh, I'm just going to like recap very quickly. These notes, I'll just put them in the GitHub repo uh, so that uh, everybody can consult them. Um, so in the container D, in the runtime session notes, so the beginning of the conversation was a lot about logging and shims. Uh, lots of notes there, uh, but basically there was the idea of um, uh, moving some of the C groups resource management up to container D. Uh, and then um, and putting the shim yeah inside of that C groups uh, so container D would own it yeah and then on the Kubernetes side uh, so Kubernetes would create the C group and pass it to the CRI to create the pod sand sandbox. Uh, Yeah, so Michael was saying that logs, uh, log management should be in the shim and we'll use Go plugins uh, to load these. Uh, there's been a discussion on containers, uh, container D and VMs. Um, yeah, the shim in the C groups, so that, that was raised in that conversation as well. Uh, there's been a whole conversation about plugins in Go. Uh, and actually, when you Google that, uh, plugins go on ABI. Uh, the reference you find is a Reddit thread where a team is actually asking the question, <laughs> are you guys providing an ABI? So, so I, I have an action item here of Tim to ask Jan from the Go team uh, to send them. So I'll send you a reminder about that <laughs> to ask them to define an ABI. Uh, and then uh, there was an important quote from Darren during that session that Bash is the best programming language ever. <laughs> um, yeah, it was a very productive meeting. <laughs> uh, we talked a little bit about multi-tenancy, uh, but I think I skipped out of that one because I had another meeting. Uh, and then some discussions about labels. And my understanding is that labels are not part of it, like container D, you just pass them some uh, opaque blob and you just pass them through. Uh, and then a conversation about the container D GA date, we just had it before. End of Q2, end of H2, <laughs> just one letter away. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, that's it. And then I have the notes on the governance session. And uh, so I took notes for the governance session. I'll put that on GitHub as well, Chris. Uh, and then the integration sessions, I have complete notes there. Uh, did someone take notes during the, um, or, oh yeah. So Derek, can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, let me try and go through my notes here. So I, I think we started off our session kind of doing a recap on snapshots, mostly for Vincent since he missed the earlier talk. Um, but then we actually had to do it twice since he was getting food during our recap for him. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that, that's, that's, that's the level of detail I was trying to, trying to capture. <laughs> uh, so. Uh, we started off the discussion mostly talking about the, the snapshot drivers, um, how they're going to be uh, integrated back into Docker. There was some discussion about whether it'd be used with build, what would the, the primitive look like within Docker, um, how they'll be pluggable. Um, so I, I don't know if we talked about the Go 1.8 plugin stuff too much, but yeah. Yeah, yeah, okay. It seems to have been a big topic today. Um, but yeah, we, we want to be able to leverage that. So we're hoping that uh, we get good resolutions on the, the possible issues there. Um, there was some discussion about volumes and snapshots. Let's see. Oh, there was some discussion around kind of 
the read-only nature of uh, snapshots. So we have this view method uh, that we described. So how the view method will be used, whether it can be used to kind of share a root file system across multiple containers. I think our, what was our conclusion on that? Yeah, I think our conclusion was mostly that we, uh, at the snapshot layer, we weren't, we we're not very opinionated in terms of how the read-only uh, snapshots will be used. So we can leave that up to the higher levels of the stack. A uh, couple action items for uh, moving that that snapshot model up into the GitHub design docs. And then from there, we talked a lot about OCI, uh, the locator work that, that Stephen was talking about. Uh, how, it, how it's going to be used, how people integrate it with it, um, stuff related to how it will be similar to Git and how it might be familiar for uh, some folks, and especially for people. Uh, I know Amazon had some uh, desire to be able to, to really plug into the, the resolver. Oh, and, then, and then Steven showed a demo. Uh, so. We didn't, we didn't get we didn't get time to do the end to end demo, but it worked and it was awesome. You should have been there. That was that was that was mostly we talked more, more about uh, the resolver and stuff after that. Jeffrey. So it's just saying that there was, we had some concern about the, there was some concern expressed about the 1.8 plugins as in the other case, or in, in the other uh, group. So yeah, I think that's something we really want to figure out, whether or not we're, we're kind of going in the right direction there. We need to figure out an alternative approach. Very good. So, happy hour time. Thanks very much, everybody. <laughs> and uh, all those of you who are coming to DockerCon, uh, uh, don't forget the summit the third day. All right. <laughs>